Look, I don't really know about you, but I think just maybe it's a good time to be unemployed. Wait, I'll explain. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's been so fast yet really slow a week. Very exciting on one hand and then extremely boring on the other. One moment you're so cocksure what you're doing, the other confusion, the frustration, I have basa. It's just a good week to be unemployed. Believe me, you sleep all week, tiptoe into your mother's kitchen, help yourself till she shows up and yells at you. Anyway, congratulations to all those who graduated from tertiary institutions across the country this weekend and to the national service people who always thought having managed their mega NSS allowance in the past year, their salaries would make them rich overnight. Welcome to the world of realities. You'll be paying fees for people you don't know very soon. Yeah, and if you think adulting is a scam, try the news headlines. On one hand, finance minister wants us to believe the economy is thriving and people are better off. On the other hand, he imposes new taxes on all of us because of massive revenue deficits and scraps luxury vehicle tax for some rich people. Charlie, we are not even done crying over the increase in talk tax. No, we hear of a palace school. ECG has overthrown PDS. We think our situation is so bad. We are wailing. But Equia Pelosi visits, looks at us, smiles around on us, and says, you guys are so lucky. You look so good together. Guess what? All these make us totally forget we are not done whining about the $4.5 million we literally wasted on our Afghan campaign. Well, this is Ghana. This is Backpage on City TV. It's your world. And he is Caleb Kuda. Good to have you, my friends. So, to be brutally honest, honest, I'm told, the finance minister can not, he cannot attack Kofori's bad debts. He basically spent at least two and a half hours to tell us the economy has made life comfortable for us, why we must praise the Kufado government for stabilizing the size of Kenke across the city, and then why we must borrow him more money, like six billion cities, to keep the thriving economy thriving. Because the revenue generating institutions, he, the president, and Dr. Baumia and his and their government pride themselves in transforming, have failed to deliver revenue, the ones they projected to rake in. Mr. Speaker, as a result of these revisions to the 2019 fiscal framework, the 2019 appropriation of 78 billion 771 million 833,602.12 CDs that was approved by this August House in November 2018 will not be adequate to cater for the additional program needs which would increase the total appropriation to 85 billion 142 million 189,527.4 Seats. Government is therefore requesting honorable members to consider and approve an amount of six billion three hundred and seventy million three hundred and fifty five thousand nine hundred and twenty five point eight two million cities. Now more and bill cry saying anyway. <laughs> But he made a pronouncement, I think one's bill is lesser. He made a pronouncement that made some people truly happy. These people are the not so rich people who have had to use all of their life savings to buy hard body cars just because of the bad nature of their roads, only to be slapped with um, luxury tax because their engines are 3.0. Mr. Speaker, review of luxury vehicles levy. Government in 2018 introduced a luxury vehicles levy to raise revenue. We have noted suggestions from the general public on the implementation of this tax. And Mr. Speaker, as a listening government, we are proposing to the House the withdrawal of the luxury tax levy.
We will, Mr. Speaker. Continue to improve compliance, expand the tax net, and explore other innovative sources of raising revenue. Ah, it's not easy. I can truly feel the pressure on the finance minister. So this is what is happening to him, Dr. Baumia, and the economic management team, all right? So imagine this sweet-talking dude running you, and then he tells you, look, this is your guy. He's not smart. The bills you are paying are too much. In fact, many of them are nuisance. I will find better ways of making money for us to enjoy. Instead of taxing your labors and your sweats, you know, fine girl like you. I mean, you look so pale. From all these taxes you've been paying, see, I have far smarter ways of doing things. Look, we will produce things like 1D, 1V, I mean, 1D, 1V, or 1V, 1D, 1V, 1D. You know, that will generate money for us to enjoy. And he calls, you know, he calls it from taxation to production. And you are so impressed, like, this dude is so smart. Oh, my God, where have I been? And immediately, you give this guy a quality hug. You know what I mean? And then you WhatsApp the other guy who only said, <laughs> you WhatsApp him and tell him, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, like a million times, you know. Now, it's time for the 1D, 1F, 1V, 1D, and do this like, yo, um, you know, the deficit I came to meet, uh, every day deficit, every day deficit I came to meet. And it all sounds like scopa to mana in your ears, you know. So on top of all that, you are told, um, babe, you know what? That car your ex bought for you, you know, is a luxury vehicle. Now, to make up for the low cash we make against our projections, you know, I go tax on. You nag and nag. Ken, I've had enough. Not again. I thought you said you were different. I thought you were smarter. Now, now the hard body crowd was a luxury vehicle. I've had enough. You're nagging. And you're nagging gets him. So he says, okay, okay, okay. You know what? I will scrub the luxury vehicle thing. And you're so excited. You want to jubilate. No. <laughs> he says, now, um, the credit you used to call me, you know. I go tax out. Sister, will you do take or pay, take and pay, or take and take? Which one will you do? We'll find out the details of that from this break. Travel the country in just 30 minutes on the Utah bus. I'm just coming from the home or from the palace of the new Yana. This is our story being told. Today we are reaching you from Agotima. Journeys to explore. From the plains to the greens to the scenery to everything. There's so much we need to do, you know, to boost tourism around this area. Ooh, that guy was just getting up. Learn and indulge in the culture and lifestyle of the people. Utah shows on City TV every Saturday at 1 p.m. Let's take you on a journey of discovery. The incredible sights, artifacts, music, and adventure. It is what makes life worth living. Our history, the arts, and soul. Art and Soul with Melissa Award. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Only on City TV. Art and Soul. 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 Welcome from that break, my dear friends. This is Backpage, your new satirical show on City TV with me, Caleb Kuda. Now, let's talk about the tick or pay, pay and tick thingy, okay? Let's listen to the man a grandmother friend calls Ken Kofuriata again. About 640 million scabs of the contracted gas supply 
It's on a take or pay basis, Mr. Speaker, meaning we have to pay whether we use it or not. From 2020, if nothing is done, we'll be facing annual excess capacity charges of between $550 million and $850 million every year. Thankfully, Mr. Speaker, we have a plan to deal with this. So basically, during the dark days with your ex, he was desperate to bring in some light because he could feel, you know, he was losing you. So he promised to fix it. Out of desperation, he contracted or signed arrangements with some people called IPPs. Let's say it means independent power producers, okay? So they, you know, they got loans to set up power stations. As a result, we have been paying for the excess power they produce regardless. We may not necessarily be using them. And according to Kenzie, Ghana has been paying $50 million a month. Kenzie, this sounds like a Ponzi. Hey, $50 million a month. My God. So you look at Kenzie and ask, what are we going to do now? <laughs> what are we going to do now, Rebecca? Anyway, here. Mr. Speaker, we cannot allow this situation to continue. There is no doubt that the situation in the energy sector is shocking the economy. We are in a state of emergency and must therefore respond with urgency and boldness. We shall from August 1st, 2019, Mr. Speaker, with the support of Parliament, make take or pay contracts a beast of the past. Yeah, so Kenzie has declared a state of emergency in the power sector. From August 1, government has suspended the existing arrangement. We are now looking at a take and pay arrangement. So now tell me, will you take or pay? Or take and pay, or take and go, or go and take. Confusion. Ayabasa. So how did we get here? How did we get here? On point of view, Katie Hammond, who is in this government, um, was on the show. And before anything else, he took the opportunity to tell the world, he, you know, he was a senior deputy energy minister but not energy minister proper, even though his deputy, no, and no cry, no. I say it's bigger than some video watch. Uh, one of us uh, is accused of uh, uh, heresy, and that is that uh, you refer to uh, your previous position as a minister of state, let's get it right. I was the deputy minister, incidentally, the only deputy minister then, deputy minister. That's quite different for minister okay. of state. So let's okay. get it right. For, uh, Thank you for the correction. Masquerading and that's all. <laughs> what, uh, you know, so, uh, yes. Deputy so, minister. Yeah, so a uh, senior one for that one. Uh, you know, so I've um, uh, seven years at the Ministry of Energy. Um, so. <laughs> so before, now you understand the root of the senior minister syndrome. There was senior deputy minister at some point. You're right. Good. Now, he was on point of view with um, his good friend, you know, who was once power minister, but it's now in opposition, opposition. The two of them needed us to know who is older. Share. Yeah. It's important, Wati. Um, let me disagree with my colleague and my junior brother. How many years, junior? You are my junior brother. Yeah, what are two there years are two years boys, boys yeah. here. In I the see. studio, yes. I see. Let me decide. I've known him longer than anybody in Parliament. Oh. Okay. 1970 in the AG. I'm half AG, I'm half. Uh, Let's put this in proper context. <laughs> but really, this is not what we want, sir. Uh, this is not what we want to know. How did we get here? Who superimposed this fraud on us? Let me put this lie to rest. Which one is this? We did not discover this as a result of any due diligence. We were given a tip off. Well, that, well, even if that is true, isn't it part of the investigation <laughs> process? You know, no, it was I want to hear that. Well, we were gave, given, a, given tip, the tip a tip off yeah. on the 16th of July that this document that has been produced as bank guarantee was fictitious and that a gentleman who is purported to have signed it did not even have the power to sign. 16th of July, 
Wow. It takes us two weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's that, that's, a, that's a surprising. No, no, just get to the logic I'm, of it. If NDC had this material, I mean, on the 16th of July, you really think that they wouldn't have gone no, to no, town? No, no, I'm, I'm I mean, the are you saying NDC go to town? No, no, I'm saying the government. The Ghanaian state. How the, do you know that we got the team for the city? At the end of the contest, though, some observers say Honorable Katie Hammond be strong man. And he should add Kasahari to his hobbies. <laughs> that is, if he's not in the industry already, because I know he will be to medical any day. Well, so for your information, there has been a palace coup. Yes, ECG has taken over PDS. Now you can go back to shouting, oh, ECG, instead of PDS. PDS, cross the line, romantic, sir. So when there is doom, so know what to say. Oh, ECG. I'm a user or Dumkum or, yeah, Dumkaka, yeah. For further details, right, let's hear the state announcer. Good job, Uncle. The Ghana side um, has detected that there are a number of um, uh, irregularities uh, with the payment guarantee as submitted by PDS. And in accordance with the terms and the spirit of the agreement, the Ghana side has opted to suspend and fully inquire into uh, these detected anomalies and then determine the next uh, cause of action. It's been going on for some, some, some months now. And uh, they are of the view that they are at the stage where they have to suspend to protect the uh, assets and the interest of the Republic, even as they go through a full-scale inquiry and a final determination of what needs to be done. Boss, you look dapper, mom. So eventually, how much was approved for government again? How much was approved in Parliament? The, uh, the House has approved the sum of six billion three hundred and seventy million three hundred and fifty-five thousand nine hundred and twenty-five point eighty-two Ghana cities as the supplementary estimate for the government for the financial year 2019. Um, for the financial year 2019. Charlie, media bill, no, me say, one's bill alone can sort it. But, well, the approval was not without the minority, majority, Tom and Jerry games. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Minister for Finance appeared before this house. He says that the NDC increased the debt. He has contributed significantly himself to the increase in the debt. I have dealt with issues of the IPPs, the banking sector. Somewhere he reports 8 billion, somewhere 9 billion, somewhere 11 billion. The Deputy Minister for Energy explained yesterday why it's not possible. Especially when you have padded the cost of production. The padding of cost of production. As so, as so you, as so you can tell us, you are asking me who padded it. You were in charge of the so-called emergency plans. The emergency plans. The, the padded cost of production. That is the brand Ghana is bearing now. Say, uh, wait till I'm see him on a new chamber. Anyway, <laughs> but look, we haven't forgotten the increase in talk tax, so we've not. We've not. The communication service that was introduced in 2008 at an ad valorem rate of 6%. The tax is levied on charges payable by consumers for the use of communication services. Government proposes to increase the tax. Government proposes to increase the tax to 9% to develop the foundation for the creation of a viable technology ecosystem in the country from 6%. Brian Kenway, you see, this thing it will affect singles a lot. And the way credit is expensive, no, some of the telecos, telecos are also cheating us, no. This will make life difficult, pa. And these days, they don't do free night calls, even if that existed, it will mean that many workers will make calls deep into the night and sleep at work. This will affect the productivity and even taxation in the end. Now, the same can be said of students, right? But I need to tell you that the Nyabros, we the Nyabros, will be the most affected. You see, when you call grandmother in the village and say that, that good evening, 
the response alone, a good evening, it can take like 10 CDs from your credit. Before we start our tradition of responses, the view day, you say, oh, for father, early mother, elder, I hear you, oh, boss. Like, before you even get to why you are calling, 150 Ghana CDs is gone already. So, bro, I can do something about it. In fact, at the end of the show, I will share an idea with you that can generate more money and uh, even make Ghana cleaner, right? Just remind me, okay, remind me. And consider this talk tax, Charlie. Consider it. Review it. This is not the change anyone opted for, this one. So wait, the communications, communications tax amendment, bill. when is it taking effect so we can start preparing now? One of my colleagues, he's a senior reporter here and a parliamentary correspondent. But when he's in parliament, the MP see him as a potential MP. Um, so they call him an uh, intern MP. I tell you, Kaza, Kaza, Kaza. <laughs> the major decision taken in the House today has got to do with the approval of the media review statement and supplementary budget estimates. But the various taxes amendment bills that accompanied the media review budget, such as, uh, such as the repeal of the luxury tax vehicle amendment bill, as well as the communication service tax amendment bill, among others, are still yet to be passed. Reporting from Parliament, my name is Duke Mensopoku for City News. Oh, okay. I mean, did you, did you future MP, like God is working with the MPs, you don't see the difference. We all, we all, just everything. And then also, a mood of fine. Okay, so he he was reporting from the precincts of Parliament. What it? Now that the talk, the, now that the talk on tax, you know, has not been passed yet, you know. Bra Ken, please consider our appeal, okay? And we want the development. We want development in this country, but this tax net widening, dear Charlie, it won't develop our personal budget crowd. Talking of development, there are some developments ongoing in Ashiama and Mamobi. This one, just for your eyes. Just for your eyes. <laughs> Mini be pia kwa miku no o ye juma wa hasi o ye o kada. O da wa hasi o jina ha o bi pe o bi o di ni kwa no o di na kwa. And mi wa nkwa la fo. Nkwa la fo ni mini ni ndasu biya wa hao. Mini ni ndasu biya. Mini be biya me kwa. Mini mani gusku na ya wa hane ni mo ho. A wuma cho ya wa hao mo ba kwa 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 you better move, Miss Oliver. Fear, and I'm about to buy me now. I'm in a nakra mu piano shia. Oh, Tofam, oh Tofam, I say to me, did not go switch you. It's much a year. Must have my eyes. Come on, my eyes. Come on, my eyes. No, my people. It's ya in your mano. Ya de coin. It's ya sir by no. So, oh wah wah. Oh no no, my boy. Oh, I'm a young intern because baby, I do not need bread, Papa. I'm a greatest greatest citizen. My four four father has been to first first world war and second world war. So called the elaboration of independence. And now we have all come as Ghanaian. And now they are selling us to China. Chinese. That means they are taking us back to assimilation. They are not going to capture us as slaveries. So there that we are telling the people. Nana, we have a chair for Nana here when he was vying for post. So therefore that we are telling the elders and the Nana to let them know that that land should be demarcated and give it to us as Ghanaians. Right. Um, I said that one was just for your eyes, Abi. Yeah, Ninda Suoho. Now let's go to Gold House now because some former workers of Anglo Gold Ashanti stormed the place. It was a massive storm. They were sacked or, you let's say, laid off. Over 4,200 of them between 2013 and 2014 by Anglo Gold Ashanti. Now, they have not been paid their special compensation, even though all other entitlements due them are reported to have been paid. They say they are owed between $60,000 and $125,000. This is based on the number of years one worked there, okay? Now, one of them says, He's aging and he needs his money now, now, now. Financial hardship is aging me. Now, you, you take me to be somebody who is 50 years, but I'm 48 years. Do you understand? Because of this financial hardship that I'm going through, I'm being aged, and uh, so, so do some of my colleagues here. 
we are we, we, we are we are we are wallowing in financial hardship indeed in our bosses. Oh daddy, I be here what say? We the hustle, oh. and we the hustle, eh? we the hustle for that. Let's talk about um, why, shall we? I mean, yes. This week, the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority (DVLA) responded favorably to City TV's letter to partner us. They dedicated a van of theirs to the war against indiscipline course. See? We had observed um, the operation that City TV together with MTTD had launched and which was going very well. And we felt that, um, uh, hey, why did we not even get this? Why were we not the ones to, to lead with City and, and MTTD in support? But be that as it may, uh, it, it was always not too late to, to tag along and help get the campaign sustained. I found the deputy CEO of DVLA very warm and frank and interesting, right? And uh, this partnership is so timely as many lawyers and doctors were arrested on our last visit to the Legon Bypass where the driver of the health minister, Kukua Jiman Menu, was arrested. Also, someone with an SUV who decided to join the Speaker of Parliament's convoy on his way to meet Nancy Pelosi, Akira Pelosi. You're arrested. The convoy of the Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Kue, soon sped past with a dispatch rider ahead of it, which is required of ministers too. But the driver of Toyota Prado, who joined the convoy without authorization, was arrested. He gave the excuse that a woman in the car was a minister. I know many of my friends who have not done their licenses in the last 10 years, they are doing their licenses, they are getting it done now. now also, let me just inform you that if you don't have, if you've not embossed your stickers on your windscreen, it's an offense, right? Time is up. I want you to take good care of yourself. We'll meet again. Oh, lest I forget. Finance Minister, the idea I said we'll generate more taxes from Kinky and keep Ghana clean. I, know. I didn't share with you next week. Make a date with us on Backpage. My name is Caleb Kuda. Take good care. Have a good time.